Mike, you said uh, in the week that maybe you felt the players weren't quite over the Stockport defeat. I'm assuming they probably are now. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think um, that's the highs and lows of football we, we all love it for. Um, yeah, I thought uh, we spoke to them before the game and I felt as though there was still a bit of pain from the weekend, which is perfectly natural, but it's our job to try and support and take that away, eradicate it, refocus, and I felt as though we, we might have struggled a little bit this week. Um, but then they respond like that. So I think um, before the game, we had a bit of apprehension um, with, you know, we normally bounce back and we're very good at home, but we also know how good Warsaw are and there can't be any complacency. Um, and the first half was, you know, I felt that we controlled things. We could have scored more, but also Cal's made a few good saves and there was a little tiredness out there. Um, but yeah, we come out in the second half and um, yeah, the introduction, I thought Max took a while to get going. So, <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it uh, must be really difficult to, to G him up. Yeah, I know, I know, it was. I thought he was. Uh, it took him about 32 seconds, maybe, to <laughs> impact the game. No, but um, yeah, it's great to have him back. Um, but the the character of the boys and like you see, Gilbs just his engine and his um, enthusiasm to run, regardless of what it is. And everyone, I thought I, I could go through the whole team. Um, but yeah, uh, we've got to sort our away form out. So as good as that is, let's enjoy it. It's been enjoyed now. It's it's refocused and that's as quick as football happens. Um, f- five goals, but also a clean sheet, which has mm-hmm. it's been a little while coming. I think was that the second in 18 or something. So it, it's it's obviously something that, that is hugely important. And, and also, Michael Kelly getting the nod. Was there, was there ever a doubt in the week? Uh, look, I'm, you know, I'm not going to talk about uh, the selection because you know it could all change and um, you know looking at that bench uh, after you lose five nil it could be really tough and it was a real testament you know, you've probably got two thousand league games sat on the bench um, most is that of right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no the point of it is is uh, um, sometimes challenges aren't just on the pitch um, and it, it showed you the um, solidarity of the group and, and everyone that came on really did affect the game positively. Uh, so yeah, in terms of there were always questions about selection all throughout the team, especially when um, you know you, you're hurting and you lose five nil. Um, but I felt as though we um, could you have gone wrong in today's team selection? I don't know, but I feel like anyone we put out there would have given everything they've got, and everyone's at such a level and the standard's so high. I think it's just a testament to the boys. Let's go back to Max Dean briefly and bringing in Emery Tezgal. I mean, Emery had a, a great first half. Mm-hmm. His touch was right on on it. He scored. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's probably on for man of the match, to be honest. But then he comes off and, and Max Dean comes on and, and, and shows the strength that you've got, of course. But um, feel a bit sorry for Emery Tezgal? Uh, no, I think um, it's... Uh... It's he's here to learn and grow, um, and I think we can all see um, his strengths uh, as a as a player, but also as a person because he hasn't had a great amount of game time. But every time he comes on, he just he gives you such consistency in his effort in his intentionality. Um, and I thought today, yeah, he was fantastic. And um, as, if as long as he keeps that understanding, then the outcome will keep improving um, no matter uh, because. He's a very good player and he's got some extremely um, powerful traits and especially in the way we play, you could see for such a young lad, his physicality and his intelligence and um, he, he was a really good platform for us and yeah, really pleased for him to get the goal. And Max has taken over this bump, bumping duties from you as well. Yes, that was uh, punishment for not getting his hat-trick. <laughs> <laughs> no, Max is, uh, yeah, he's, he deserved that. Thank you. Have you known a cameo performance like that from a substitute before? Uh, I'd, I'd have to wrap my brains on that. But yeah, again, um, it's the group. Do you know what I mean? And emphasise that. He's, uh, he's, a special, he's a special lad, but without the boys and the understanding and the detail, he doesn't have that impact. So I think from last week, um, how quickly it changes and it can also change again. Um, we've got to prepare now, we've got to recover, we've got to dust ourselves down and 
we know how strong Notts County are going to be um, and we've got to make sure we're, we're ready. I mean, we saw how desperate he was for the hat-trick. I mean, he was thumping the ground. He was he was chattering away at himself every time the ball didn't make it quite to him. But also showed the other side of the game by sliding in Alex Gilby, sliding in Joe Tomlinson. He just showed everything that he's got in his locker. He did, yeah. Um, and he's still got a lot of uh, room for improvement. And that's the scary thing, I suppose. His ceiling is incredibly high. Um, that tenacity. Um, we spoke this week about... Um, I don't think he needs any more fire in the belly. It's that uh, ice in the veins. Um, but yeah, what what do you do with someone that's got that fire in the belly? You just you know try and help and support, but let him do what he does. Um, you know, obviously he's been out for for a while with with that hamstring injury. Is it something you, you kind of have to say, okay, you still got to bide your time and come back in, or is he now ready ready to go to the races and, and start games? Um, I think the the work that he did um, before. He was even with us. Is that the guys uh, make them um, hit targets and high-speed running? Um, and I think, of course, the load will increase his chances um, in terms of you know not land fatigue. But I think that he, he I would have probably had no doubt putting him in from day one. But you know, you just want to do it the, the right way. And I think he's had a sufficient amount of minutes now to be ready. Yeah. We saw the call to put Michael Kelly in today. How much of the vibe said was it at nil nil to deny what was a one on one chance? Uh, yeah, I mean, games change games, um, and if you think the scoreline would have you know been the same, then yeah, it didn't change it too much. But we know what football's like, and one nil against a really tough opponent who are um, extremely physical, and um, at that moment were uh, stopping us and their. Their intelligence and their experience was making it difficult for us, um, so it, it proves to be a huge save. So, um, you know, that definitely could have changed the game, but irrelevant whether it did or not, it's up to us to keep keep going. And the clean sheet's pleasing, um, but we dust ourselves on and go on to the next one. Was it pleasing as well to see that Nottingham won the penalty, which I think is the first penalty that the team's won for quite a while? Uh, they then pushed on, were able to attack again and again and again and keep Walsall under constant pressure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've had questions about our first half performances, and then we uh, it goes slows down in the second half, and that was the reverse of it. But I think it just shows that there is no um, resting on any uh, scoreline or or coming off it. We're always looking to probe, and I think you've seen that when when the it clicks and the, the gear, we go through the gears, it's very difficult to stop. But it takes a lot of um, a lot of quality, a lot of concentration um, and a high level of skill to execute that. But that's what we're about. That's the way we play um, and we'll never come away from it.